I'm going to talk about how to efficiently set up a GPU to start fine tuning and ideally do it with just one click where the GPU will start up, then the relevant repository from GitHub will be cloned and you'll be up and running. Now, I'll make a few comments first of all between using Google Colab for fine tuning versus using a service like RunPod. Then I'm going to focus on RunPod just because the GPUs are more powerful and I find I save a lot more time by using a hosted service than using Colab, which has got older GPUs and also has limited VRAM, limited memory, which limits the size of models and the batch sizes and the time makes the time longer when I want to do fine tuning. Now, the reason it's worth putting time into these scripts for getting a GPU set up, and I'm gonna share templates with you, is that if you're doing fine tuning often, you're gonna spend probably 10 minutes every time you start up an instance. And so if you accumulate that over many fine tunings, you can probably save uh, hours, if not tens of hours, if this is something you do regularly. So I finally come around to setting up a template that runs really smoothly and fast. Let me show you a very quick setup. Then uh, I'm going to talk about Google Colab versus, find, uh, versus RunPod type setups. I'll go through a detailed basic template, and then I'll go through a more advanced template. I'll also show you how to SSH in to connect to these templates when you want to fine tune through cursor or VS code or how to access it via terminal. So first off, here I'm in Colab. You can use this. It's popular for fine tuning with, with libraries like Unsloth or with transformers. But the key issue with Colab, if you look here at changing the, the runtime type, you can choose between a T4, which is a very old generation GPU. It doesn't even support things like flash attention or brain float 16, which are uh, quite standard, if not even getting older now. So on a T4, you have to train with Float 16. Uh, this is going to affect the quality of your model. Now you can train with an A100, but that requires having a paid tier of access. And the A100s here are only 40 gigabytes of VRAM, not 80, like you will typically see on services uh, like RunPod. So you're going to be limited in the model sizes. You also can't chain multiple GPUs together easily on Google Colab. So that is going to limit you from doing larger trainings. On the plus size, the T4 is free, so free is always a good price. And maybe it's good if you are limited in terms of resources or you're just trying this out as a once off. But if you're doing fine tuning often, I recommend going for a faster and larger GPU because it's going to save you a lot of time and iterations. So what I'll focus on today is getting set up on RunPod with a basic template. And I want to show you the flow once through, then I'll walk through in detail every single step. You can access this basic fine-tuning repository on GitHub. I'll put a link below in the description. And to get started with this repo, you would just click this link here. It's going to bring you into RunPod. You'll need to create an account if you don't have one already. And then you can select the GPU. If I am doing fine-tunings now, I nearly always use the H200 because it's the largest VRAM. The B200 is technically faster but it has got some support issues because it's the cutting edge generation. So I'll usually use the fastest and largest GPU. If I want a cheaper GPU, then I would go typically for the A40 here, which you can see is lower price. And I'm going to select that for now. And I'm just going to run this as a basic template. So let's click on deploy. Now, this is going to copy an image of RunPod PyTorch 2.8. Um, it's sorry, PyTorch 3.11 with CUDA 12.8.1. So it's got a reasonably recent version of PyTorch and CUDA. And then on top of that, it's going to clone the repository. Now, optionally, you could automate some of the installs. I'll talk about that a little bit later. But for now, we're just cloning the container. And once that's cloned, we're going to have a Jupyter notebook that's going to start up. So here I can click Connect. And my Jupyter notebook is ready. And when I open the notebook, I'll hopefully see that the repo has already been cloned. And it has. And you can see all of the files in here. And you can see the notebooks if you wanted to start doing uh, some fine tuning here. This is a demo of the OpenAI open source models that were released in August of 25. So you can see how fast that was. I'm up and running. And I can immediately uh, start to run here. And this is uh, just a lot faster then the alternative of starting up a more generic template, having to clone the repo somehow, and then having to open up the folders. So this is the basic demonstration. I'm going to show you now how to connect via SSH, which you'll do just via connect here. 
go to SSH and you can copy this uh, XSSH overexposed TCP, open up a terminal. Let me just open a terminal here, increase my screen size, paste that in and make sure that you are using the right SSH key. So in on my laptop, in my .SSH folder here, I've got a key called ID run pod and I'm going to run that. And I'll just say yes. And I should be connected in now to the pod. And if I CD back up one folder and go into workspace, I should see here my basic fine tuning. So now I can see everything and I could even CD into that basic fine tuning. And I could decide to now, uh, for example, git commit, git add, or do various operations here. So this is a simple SSH. I'll show you now how you would do more elaborate connection using cursor or VS code or windsurf. So you click on connect again, again, grab uh, the TCP SSH overexposed TCP, and then go into cursor, which I'll copy. I'll move over into this window pane here. And in this window pane, I'm going to click down at the bottom left. It's the same for VS code, add a new SSH host, paste it in here. Make sure I've got the right key. I'm going to add it to my SSH config file. And the host has now been added. So I'll click on connect. And once I connect in here, I should be able to just open the folder that's already cloned. So I'll click on open folder. Sorry, I need to give it a second. And I'm going to go back up one, scroll down to find workspace, find basic fine tuning. And now I should have this open here without taking too many steps. So the nice thing is everything is cloned. And because everything is cloned, I don't have to clone it within a cursor, which causes it to kind of reboot. So you can definitely save a minute or two by having used uh, the correct template script. So those are the ways that you can start up either through the Jupyter Notebook, either through just a raw terminal, terminal or through VS Code slash cursor. And I want to show you now how this template works. So I'm going to go into edit pod because you could vary this template for any, for any repo that you want to use. So I'll go through the different steps here. Normally, if you start a run pod template, there is no container start command and you will just start the image and run pod will then run a script that's called start.sh. You can find that script here. And the run pod start.sh script, the default does a few things. It sets up SSH, it starts Jupyter, it exports the environment variables. So these are the key things that the run pod uh, script does. It also starts uh, Nginx, which is a Nginx, which is a reverse proxy. That's for connecting in to the pod. So by default, if there's no start command, run pod will just run that start.sh. Now, what we want to do is still run the start.sh. So we've got the exact start.sh here, but we also want to run some extra things. And the extra things I'm doing are, first of all, enabling HF hub, HF transfer for fast downloads of weights. I'm hiding the pip as root warning. And then I'm moving into the workspace folder. And here I'm either pulling the latest commit if I've already cloned and it restarts the pod, or I'm cloning the repo. So this is the cloning and then moving into that folder. Then I'm registering a custom kernel, kernel uh, inside the current Python environment. And note that I didn't actually select that kernel, but if you want to use the kernel, which is good practice, you would scroll up here and go to basic fine tuning and then select that kernel. And that means now that you're gonna be running in the kernel that has been set up through this uh, starting script here. Now, I haven't installed all that much into the kernel because this is a very simple container start command, but in principle, you could pre-install things here so that instead of having to, for example, install UV or install unsloth or HF transfer, you could in principle do that within the start command here or within the container start command. And I'll show you how to do that in a more advanced implementation. So that's a quick overview of how this part works. Um, notice also that in the template, I set a few environment variables. These ones here are set automatically, the public key and Jupyter password, but I'm setting, uh, I'm actually setting HF transfer here to one. That's actually a duplicate. So I'm doing that twice, which is not necessary technically. I'm setting a GitHub personal access token, 
That's not necessary because this is a public repo, the basic fine tuning. But if I'm doing advanced fine tuning, it's a private repo. So I need to have a token that has access. And the way I do that is simply by um, selecting one of my secrets, which I set over here. I'll show you that in a moment. The other thing I do is set a hugging face token. And the beauty of setting a hugging face token is that when I come in here now and I'm in the script, I actually don't need to run the login. Uh, I can just quickly show you if you want. If I do you've, uh, pip install hugging face um, hub qu and I run this, it actually shouldn't ask me. Uh, well, it is asking me for my login. Yeah, but uh, technically I don't need to run this because I've already set my hugging face token here. Uh, so yeah, that's the benefit. Again, you save another 30 seconds here on having to click over to the tokens page, copy a token, and then go back and set yourself up to run. So that's another benefit there. And if you want to know how to set the secrets, you should set them over here. So go to uh, secrets and just create a secret and give it a description and put in the value. And then those can be pulled into your RunPod template. One other thing I didn't explain is in RunPod, you can also set your SSH keys. You need to go to settings and then you need to go to um, SSH, let's see, API keys, sorry, not API keys, SSH public keys. And you want to paste in your public key down here. Now, this is not a, a private secret. This is my public SSH key. You would get this by doing running SSH key gen. You can ask ChatGPT and putting that key, which is for me, the RunPod key, in my .ssh folder and copying the public portion and putting it here. The private portion will stay within my file on my computer, which you shouldn't expose. So that's the basic template. I want to show you, I'm going to uh, shut down this pod here and then show you a little more advanced version. So let's just stop this pod and delete it. And now let's go to advanced fine tuning, which is a private repo. The template for getting this started is not private though, although it won't work unless you've got access to the repo. This is a repo where I talk about a lot of types of fine tuning, cover a lot of scripts. Uh, you can purchase it at trials.com forward slash advanced fine tuning. Um, but we're going to take a look at the, at the link for getting started with an advanced template. We're going to run it on the A40 and we're going to get it started just while I walk through what's in the, in the template. So here, if I look at what's inside the pod, it's very similar. We're setting HF transfer. We're ignoring the pip as root warning, but I'm install, I'm doing apt-get update, which updates the Ubuntu system and then installs nano. I find this is helpful because nano allows me to view files. If I do a simple uh, connection via terminal, I often like to inspect files using nano. I'll show you that in a second. And it just saves me having to run this later than in the terminal. I then configure my Git username and my Git email. You're going to see why I do that in a second when I open the notebook. But every time you SSH into a new instance or start a new instance, by default, you're not, you don't have a username or name set for doing Git commits. So you would normally need to set that, which is another kind of 30 seconds that you would need. So it's handy to have that pre-configured. Um, here, I'm just copying the repo, nothing different there. Here, I'm registering a custom kernel. So there's not a whole lot different here, uh, just some small extra steps. Now, notice that in my environment variables, I do need to now set my Git username, my Git user email, and then also my GitHub personal access token and my hugging face hub token. So let's take a look at the logs. And what you'll see here is we, um, we have started the kernel. Sorry, we've started the container. And we've got a variety, well, we've got the cloning here of advanced fine tuning. And we've got uh, Jupyter Lab started here. And actually, there's something else you can do. I'm not doing it here, but in principle, you could decide to install. So you could do um, something like pip install uv, like this, qu. And then you could do uv pip install uh, unsloth for the latest version and install it on the system because uh, you're not going to install it in a in a custom kernel. Typically, if you're using a remote GPU, you would just directly install it. 
So you could pre-install here. I sometimes do this for some of my templates where I know I'm definitely going to need to have things pre-installed. I'm not doing that right now. So let's take a look if we connect in via Jupyter. And I'm going to take a quick look at one of the fine-tuning scripts. I'll take a look at this um, OpenAI OSS. It's the advanced version of the script. And I'm just going to run, um, I'm going to run a few of these installs. It might take a second for them to run. I have this a uh, little bit more advanced setup whereby I check if there's already a Hugging Face token defined. If there is, then it's not going to ask me to log in. So I save, save that logging step. And if I run this script from the top, it's not going to stop here and ask me for login every time I run it because it's going to see that I'm already logged in. And you can see I just ran it and it didn't ask me for an input. And that's because my Hugging Face token is already set and it's set down here in environment variables uh, right here. So that's saving me some time. And I think that is pretty much um, that is pretty much a summary of the advanced tips. As I mentioned, if you want to install some of these things bef and save the time for when you actually start up the notebook, you could copy some of these over and have them um, hard coded within the template. Uh, so that's something that I mentioned I already do. Just uh, another, I won't show you how to SSH connect because it's the same as for the basic template, but I will very quickly show you connecting in and using nano. So let's go back to the terminal. Let's make sure we're pointing to the right SSH key. Say yes. And then move into the workspace folder. LS to see what's there. CD advanced fine tuning. And now here's where I like to use nano. If I want to, for example, inspect the git ignore file, I can do nano git ignore. And I can see all the files that are ignored here. So sorry, I don't want to change those. And I'm back out. And then exit lets me get back out again. And so that's the quick overview of how to set up a fine tuning template or GPU router. It saves me quite a bit of time if you add up those five or 10 minutes. And it means that um, I don't have to leave pods running because I'm not going to lose time if I just quickly restart one if I need. So hopefully this helps you get started. You can check out more at the links I'll put in the description. And let me know as usual, any comments, any comments below. Cheers, folks.